Well, folks, Beyonce has a brand new documentary out. And that means, according to Michael Eric Dyson at The New York Times, that she is, wait for it, wait for it, a prophet. The dumbest piece of the day comes courtesy of Michael Eric Dyson. No, no shock there. He's a professor at Vanderbilt University. He's the author of Entertaining Race, Performing Blackness in America. And he has a piece about Beyonce. The piece is titled, at The New York Times, of course, of course, of course, it is titled Beyonce, Amen. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, what? You'd be correct to do so. But no, he actually means this pretty literally. He means that Beyonce is a goddess. She is the cult leader, quote, the truth is plain, but elusive. Beyonce Knowles Carter is not only the world's greatest entertainer. I mean, again, I'm not a Taylor Swift fan. I'm just going to point out that Beyonce's documentary was like doing one-tenth the business of Taylor Swift. But in any case, Beyonce Knowles Carter is not only the world's greatest entertainer, a feminist and a principled advocate of black culture, but something of a religious prophet, says Michael Eric Tyson. Her method is admittedly unorthodox and not uncontroversial. She delivers philosophy in Versace, theology in heels on a stage. Oh, good Lord. She's a scantily clad lady who can belt a little bit, but has given up belting in order to warble lyrics within a one octave range. That's actually what Beyonce does. Each night near the beginning of her performance on her Renaissance tour and in the eponymous documentary released on Friday, Beyonce declared she wanted the people gathered in her name to find a safe space for liberation. After all we've been through in the world, I feel like we all want a place to be safe and connected to other human beings, she says in her documentary, Everyone Has a Thirst for Community. Michael Eric Dyson says, quote, as a professor, I was delighted to hear an echo of the language of progressive intellectuals as we battle over race and our place in the academy. I've heard her language resonating three times now in three concerts in three cities, each venue jammed with every type and stripe of humanity from straight to gay to trans and all colors of the rainbow. Conservative forces allied against wokeness find talk of liberation and safe spaces for minority groups as a bid to play the victim. Yet Beyonce's pride in her blackness pops off the stage and the screen. It is an animating force of her performance, resonating in the music she sings, her dance moves, her choice of musicians, her vernacular, her swagger, her sense of humor. I have been a Baptist preacher for nearly 45 years, and to me, those concerts recalled what church at its best should be. So first of all, if you're a Baptist preacher, you probably shouldn't talk about human beings in these sorts of terms. Just going to point that out. As a religious person... If you are going to talk about people as prophets, typically they should be talking about God. And typically they should have prophecy. They shouldn't be singing about shaking their thing. But, says Michael Eric Dyson, for black queers, Beyonce's stadium has become a sanctuary. Their presence at her concerts is a vivid reminder of what the church should do to welcome everyone who shares a desire to get better by loving the best way they know how and by loving one another as if God's reputation were at stake. The songs of Renaissance are rooted in black queer house disco and dance culture. She dedicated the album to her godmother, Uncle Johnny, a queer black man who made her prom dress and introduced her to the music to which she pays homage. Yes, this is what church is for. As you note, the church has no standards for you. All church is there. It's basically a building where you get together and everybody performs wild acceptance on one another. Or alternatively, that has nothing to do with church and has never to do with church. I've got a holiday gift idea that is sure to make you the hero of the season. Now, we all know the holidays can be a little bit hectic. The shopping, the cooking, the never-ending list of things to do. Don't fear. I have the best gift that you can give your wife, mom, mother-in-law, anybody. It is the gift of GenuCell skincare. From now until Christmas, GenuCell's most popular package has a special discount just for my listeners at GenuCell.com slash Shapiro. Treat yourself and your loved ones to the absolute best skincare in the world. Those troubling forehead wrinkles, fine lines, skin redness, yes, even that sagging jawline will disappear before your eyes with GenuCell's most popular collection. GenuCell promises immediate effects. You'll see results in less than 12 hours guaranteed or your money back. GenuCell has sent a ton of product here for the entire office. Our favorite thing about GenuCell is it is clean and natural. They are simply the best. I know that because my family's been using GenuCell for like a decade at this point. You deserve to look and feel your best this holiday season. It's a great holiday gift. Go to GenuCell.com slash Shapiro. Get this incredible holiday discount. Every order today, instantly upgraded to free express shipping. That's GenuCell.com slash Shapiro today. Again, that's GenuCell.com slash Shapiro and get the great holiday discount. Huge tech companies in America pay next to nothing in taxes, meaning they barely give anything back to the society that made them rich. They may not do a lot of giving, but they do a lot of taking. I'm talking about how these tech companies enrich themselves by taking your personal data. They grab your web history, email metadata, video searches to create a detailed profile on you, and then they sell that off to the highest bidder. Companies aren't just selling your products anymore. They're selling you. You have become the product. They grab your data, they monetize that data, and then they use that data for whatever they want to use it for. To protect your identity and data from the tech giants, I recommend using ExpressVPN every time you go online. Think about all the websites you visit. Everything you do and say online is tracked by these giant corporations. Using your public IP address, they can uniquely match your activity and know your location. ExpressVPN makes you anonymous online by camouflaging your IP address and replacing it with a different secure IP of your choice. 
ExpressVPN also encrypts all of your data, so it's protected from hackers and anyone else who's trying to spy on you. What I like most about ExpressVPN is super easy to use. Right, One button to connect, same button, now you're protected. Protect your data with the number one rated VPN provider today. Visit expressvpn.com slash Ben. You can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's expressvpn.com slash Ben. Get three extra months of ExpressVPN, expressvpn.com slash Ben. But, says Michael Eric Dyson, in a way, Beyonce is what we call a process theologian, a theologian who believes that becoming takes priority over being and that temporal processes influence our understanding of God. Yeah, nailed it. I feel like you see the show and it's so beautiful, Beyonce announces, but I'm more fascinated in people seeing the process. I think the beauty is in the process. We can in turn see that Beyonce's idea of renaissance, a profound rebirth through imagination, is simply a secular translation of the notion of redemption. So why is this piece actually happening? It's because she let him into the, the, the dressing room. Seriously, that, that's why. Quote, I had an opportunity to visit with her less than an hour before her performance in Charlotte, North Carolina was set to start. She was casually adorned in a modest charcoal t-shirt that paid tribute to her world tour, attending to her children backstage, a moment of uncharacteristic calm. She wanted to thank me for some things I'd written about her, which she said have helped her understand her impact on people. I'm trying to navigate life. I'm treading water, trying to gasp for a little bit of air into my lungs to keep me afloat, but then time pulls me back into the same routine, she says in the film. Time is her relief and her burden, her freedom and her restriction. Spider-Man. Robert Frost reminds us as Beyonce already knows freedom comes when you are, quote, easy in your harness. Beyonce, says, um, says Michael Eric Dyson, is too rarely acknowledged as an intellectual of great sophistication. Hmm. Where, what are her great works? What are her great intellectual works? Really, if you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. Honestly, that's one of her better lines. It is a perception that seems to dog most black performers. It may explain why Jan Wenner, co-founder of Rolling Stone magazine, couldn't find a single black artist in his mind that could match wits with the white male figures in his recent book of interviews with rock luminaries. But at the intersection of sound and sex, of groove and gender, of work and womanhood, ah, alliteration, Beyonce soars as a thinker. She does. It's, it's, it's so true. Beyonce soars as an intellectual and as a thinker, which is why the songs for her Renaissance tour were written by, this is just track one, I'm That Girl, written by Beyonce, Terrius the Dream, Gastille D. Diamond, Kelman Duran, Mike Dean, and Tommy Wright III. By the, that's like five authors. By the way, that's like the fewest authors, many of these songs. Cozy, written by Beyonce, which means she had nothing to do with it. You ready for this? Honey Redmond, Christopher Lawrence, Penny, Luke Francis, Matthew Solomon, Dave Giles II, Nigel Charles, Terrius the Dream, Castile de Diamond, Mike Dean, Corecci Smith, and Curtis Allen Jones. How about Alien Superstar? Here's the list of people who wrote that song. Quote, Beyonce, Honey Redmond, Christopher Lawrence, Penny, Luke Francis, Matthew Solomon, Denisha, Blue Jane Andrews, for Novawab, Brittany, for Novawab, S. Carter, David to Brandon Brown, Dave Hamlin, Timothy, I'm only halfway through the credits, Timothy Lee McKenzie, Danielle, Bob Buena, Rami Yacoub, Levin Kali, Atia Boggs, LeVar Coppin, Salui Digny, Mike Dean, Robert Francis, and Anthony Manzoli, Richard Peter, John Fairbrass, Christopher Abbott, Bernard Fairbrass, John Michael Holiday, Barbara Ann Tier, Kim Cooper, Peter Rauhofer. I mean, I can't, why, why isn't she seen as an intellectual? I mean, given the fact that she writes all of her own, none of her songs. Why? I mean, it's just more people were credited on that song than on the entirety of Lady Ballers. But don't worry, says Michael. But, but there's something deeper going on here. The thing that's going on that's deeper is that we have a culture that has completely done away with church. It has completely done away with community. And now we have a bunch of air sats, churches and communities that do not hold together because they are not ideological in any serious way. They're a mishmash of people who feel themselves victimized in large part, and they are oriented against something else. And the thing that they're very often oriented against is the people outside that room. There is no higher goal. There's no higher orientation. There's nothing that brings these people together other than an idol worship of, you know, a star. And whenever the star says in some sort of generic terms about oppression and oppressed, that's the thing they follow. That's a dangerous world. Those are not people who are members of a community. That's an atomized group of people. An atomized group of people can be reduced to the mass. And that mass can be activated in entirely bad directions. Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. 